Well, hello everybody, this is Dakota from the Techies World, and welcome into the new and improved the Techies World channel. And uh, so to kick off the new uh, rebirth uh, of the channel, I thought I'd go ahead and do a brand new series on this channel called Is It Still Useful? In this series, we're going to be examining old and kind of obsolete technology to see if it's still useful in today's world. For the first episode, I thought we'd examine this iBook. This is a G4 iBook. This is one of the uh, very last iBooks uh, that was ever produced. This is a, a 1.33 gigahertz 12 inch model and uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it through its paces and see if this little machine is still useful in 2016. Do you guys think it's going to be useful? Let's find out. So the machine we're going to be using today is an iBook G4. This is a mid-2005 model. It has a 1.33 gigahertz G4 with 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, a 40 gig hard drive running Mac OS X Leopard. What I thought I'd do is um, I came up with a list of certain things that this computer must do if it is going to be classified as still a useful piece of technology. So without further ado, let's get into it. The iBook was able to connect to my home's Wi-Fi network without a problem. I was also able to connect my Apple Magic Mouse over Bluetooth. And as you see, the Magic Mouse works just fine. Web browsers on the PowerPC platforms are really becoming limited. We have a choice of these particular browsers. We have Safari 5.06 released in July of 2011. This is the very last version that was ever built for the PowerPC. Next we have Firefox 3.6.28 which was released in March of 2012. It's obsolete but it was the last officially supported version for the PowerPC platform. We also have a browser called Leopard WebKit. Now I can't find a actual date for this web browser but this browser is a modified version of WebKit although which version it's actually emulating I'm not sure. We also have Aurora Fox 20.0A2 released in 2013. Can't find a particular month though. Aurora Fox actually doesn't seem like it's developed anymore but it was a more recent version of Firefox that was modified for the PowerPC platform. Then we have 10.4 Fox 45.4.0 this is the most up-to-date browser of all three. While I did do the standard web browser test on all these browsers testing different websites, I decided to throw in some browser benchmarks. So we're going to be using Jetstream for testing Java performance, Speed Battle for testing JavaScript, and Peacekeeper for testing HTML5 performance. First off, we'll start with the Jetstream. Both Safari and WebKit failed the testing. The other three browsers actually froze halfway during the testing process. Next, we'll do the Speed Battle test. In this case, the higher the number is the better performer. As you see here, 10.4 Fox pretty much wins this particular test with a 118.61 benchmark score. And then finally, the Peacekeeper test. It should be noted that both Safari and WebKit failed to run the test properly. In fact, when testing on Safari, the whole computer actually locked up. I had to do a forced reboot in order to get the machine working again. WebKit actually crashed halfway through the process. Trying to play video from a local news station was unsuccessful. As you see here, it says I need the latest version of Flash Player. Now, YouTube on these machines is a very interesting story. It used to be, in the past, you could lower the quality settings down to around 240p, and uh, the video would play just fine, albeit at a loss of quality. However, due to the constant changes that Google has put on to the YouTube website over the years, unfortunately, the 240p option is no longer available to people who are running an older operating system. The video quality, from what I've been able to see, at least on the G4, uh, can only go to 360p. You can't go any higher and you can't go any lower. And 360p video on this machine really does struggle. And that's most likely due to um, flash. Adobe Flash on these computers are painfully slow. Let's go ahead and try playing video over my wireless connection. As you see in the Finder sidebar, the iBook is able to see my MacBook Pro, which is actually running Mac OS Sierra. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to it and as you see I connect to it without any problems. Next let's go ahead and try playing this video. This is a video that is stored on my MacBook Pro and the video feed is just being streamed over the wireless connection. 
As you see, the video is very choppy and it barely plays at all. However, I copied this exact same video over onto the iBook itself and played it, and it actually plays at a reasonable speed. The newest version of Microsoft Office you can run on this machine is Microsoft Office for Mac 2008. However, I have Office 2004 on here simply just because I like it better. And as you see, it works just fine. The newest version of iWork you can run on this machine is iWork 09. And as you see, even iWork 09 works just fine. The last version of iLife to support the PowerPC platform was iLife 09. And as you can see, it also works just fine as well. There's even a really cool hack to even get iMovie to work on this machine, which I might explain in a later video. If you want something a little bit more professional, you can even run Final Cut Pro on here, but I think Final Cut Express would be a good option. Now, many newer games are just not supported on the PowerPC platform, but a lot of the older games are, including Marble Blast. Ready, set, go! And I don't know if Mavis Beacon is considered a game, but what the hey, we'll throw it in here as well. If your iBook has a DVD drive, which most of them did come equipped with one, you can even play DVD movies. With the correct video adapter, you can connect your iBook to a monitor or to a projector. With a cool little program called Screen Spanning Doctor, you'll be able to use a secondary monitor just like a second display, dragging applications to it. Or you can work on one display and watch a movie on the other. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up. So final judgment time. What do I think about the G4 systems for this matter, or the G4 iBook for that matter? Do I think it's still useful? For the most part, they are obsolete, but they do have a few good uses uh, from my particular testing. If you have the idea of, of possibly buying one of these because they are dirt cheap, you can find these going on eBay for sometimes like 20 30 or 40 bucks these machines are very dirt cheap now and a lot of people will consider buying one of these because it's cheap and it's a cheap way to buy a mac well i'm going to steer you away from that and the reason due to the fact is because it won't run modern software i think the big limitation on this is definitely flash based video we're talking like youtube and um, Hulu and Netflix. These are services that require Adobe Flash. Also, they're just too darn slow. Uh, these machines only have a single core processor in them instead of a dual core. They are just way too slow uh, to be used as a modern computer. One thing I do recommend for the G4 systems, and maybe even the G3 iBooks for that matter, is if you have a little kid, these work great for typing. Uh, the keyboard on them is actually really nice. The uh, keyboard that is on these systems is really really nice and uh, it's a nice small compact design they actually do make these in a 14 inch model as well the 12 inch was the most popular because it was the cheapest so uh, the 12 inch was the most popular iBook that was sold compared out of the 12 and 14 and uh, so this is what you're mostly gonna find are the uh, 12 inch iBooks and if you have a little kid this works great for learning basic computer skills because it's got a good keyboard the operating system yes it's out of date but the operating system will still work good because they're not learning any skills that are not relevant uh, for today's world. The newest operating system as of the date of making this video is OS X El Capitan. There's really not a whole lot of difference between El Capitan and Leopard, which is what this machine is running. Nobody is really buying these computers anymore except collectors. Uh, we are the only people who really want these things because they're out of date and obsolete. So now what do you guys think? Do you ultimately agree with my ruling? Do you think that these machines are still somewhat useful in a few good areas, but for the most part are pretty much obsolete? 
or do you think that these machines are completely obsolete and nobody should be using them under any circumstances? So let me know what you think. Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from the Techies World, hit the subscribe button down below and also check out the website. I will post a link to all that in the video description as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Drop, I don't gain fully automatic lyrics Pumping through my brain, it's the same